about yourself, who you are, what do you do, and what is your cultural or ethnic background? Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Chris Roberts, and I'm the CEO and founder of Sterling Rhino Capital, host of the Charging Forward podcast. And, uh, you know, a little bit about me. Well, I like long walks on the beach, golf, scuba diving, mountain climbing, filet mignon, vegetables, puppy dogs, and a plethora of other things. No. Who has time for all that stuff? We're out rocking multifamily deals. We can't do all that stuff. We can't play with puppy dogs and watch reruns of Game of Thrones and golf for four or five hours at a time. Are you out of your mind? Of course, I love some of that stuff, but there's no way I could do all that stuff and actually have any level of success in the multifamily space. You do all that stuff after you've achieved a massive level of, of success in the multifamily space. But enough about that. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Sterling Rhino Capital. Uh, my, my journey started out at a very young age. I was on my own uh, at, at the age of 15. I had an entre entrepreneurial bug very early on, uh, whether it was selling candy at school or, or newspaper routes or mowing lawns or washing cars. Uh, and, and then I met a ment uh, mentor at about the age of 18 who put me on the right path. He taught me about business, gave me lots of books to read, really fired me up. And uh, I built a, an amazing sales and marketing career from there. And then that uh, propelled me into trying to find ways to invest my money so that my money could work for me. Started in the stock market, got tired of that because the returns were terrible, and then got into buying some land to do a little trading there, single family flips, burrs, uh, started following bigger pockets for a little while, which is great. Um, but I was building my spreadsheets before they even had them on their website. So uh, I, I, I came onto bigger pockets a little bit later in life. And then I came across a podcast with a guy named Michael Blanc and, uh, and was fired up about his whole multifamily concept and uh, dove into a few of his programs. And, uh, and three years later, we've exponentially grown to have about a thousand assets, a thousand doors across several assets, I believe eight today, and a fund that has a bunch of assets in it as well. And uh, we're, we're exponentially growing at this point and very excited at what the future holds. Um, as far as my background and, and what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm, my components are comprised of, I believe I am Scottish, uh, Swedish, uh, uh, and German. Um, or sorry, Irish, Scottish, Irish, and some German. But to be quite honest with you, I have no idea. Uh, some of that comes from my mom's uh, crazy, uh, <laughs> crazy internet, uh, internet searches and, and figuring out uh, where our lineage comes from. Why do you consider yourself a deal maker? Well, being a deal maker is subjective. I suppose you could read the definition and figure out what that is and, and decide if you are or you are not. I would say that anyone that's a deal maker is someone who is out uh, trying to find opportunities, hustle, uh, help people, uh, bring the best values to your investors, your team, um, and, uh, and go out there and just make it happen. Uh, I'm a deal maker because uh, I actually hustle, I grind, I, uh, I get creative, I network, um, I put in the work and, uh, and we find opportunities through that process. So um, not only does it take uh, a lot of tenacity and, and hard work, but it takes some, some good negotiation skills. It takes a team. Uh, you couldn't do this without a team. Um, certainly a deal makers is what we should be called, not deal maker. Of course, there's one person usually that you see on on, uh, on the podcast and out there, but uh, but it's an army of folks that, that make these deals happen. So uh, I'm a deal maker because uh, we put in the work and we make things happen. What's the motivation behind what you do? I love the question, what motivates you? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm motivated and I'm inspired. And motivation to me is a short-term fix. Inspiration is something that sort of keeps you going all the time. I developed a mantra in life early on so that I could use that to inspire me when I got down. And my inspiration or even temporary motivation sometimes comes from some of the challenges I went through, adversities I overcame when I was younger. And then as I got older and I started to build my businesses, I used some of those challenges and those adversities that I overcame in the business world to also drive me so that I never went back to those challenges. I learned from them, right? Uh, but there's other things that inspire and motivate me. Uh, changing the world in some way, shape or form, changing the community, helping people, giving back. Um, there was a time when I was younger that I stood in food lines. And so we had a goal three years ago to feed a million people. We achieved that through multifamily investing. Absolutely amazing. That inspires me because there's so much work still left to do. So it shouldn't just be about money. There should be a deep rooted passion and enthusiasm inside you 
that you use to drive you to success. It drives you out of bed every day. It drives you to go find another opportunity. It drives you to assist your team members in growing themselves. I think those are the things that uh, anyone can use to motivate and inspire them. But you have to find your reason, your why, your thing that keeps you going every day. What are your thoughts on mentoring, coaching, or support groups? Well, I get really excited when I talk about mentoring because mentoring completely changed my life in, in two stages. Uh, it changed my life uh, early on when I was coming out of my teenage years and, and really lacked focus. Uh, there was someone that was put in my life uh, just totally by chance that uh, completely sent me down the right path and helped me to become a professional and, uh, and develop my, uh, my skills in business. And I, I, owe the, I owe the world to that family that, that did that. Um, I actually, I put them in my book and in my forward. Um, so grateful and, and thankful that they came into my life. And without mentors, I mean, uh, who knows what path I would have gone down. I mean, all of us, all of us have these forks in the road constantly, right? And my second my second life was in the real estate business. I, I brought on a mentor and, and the program uh, helped guide me and give me some skills that I, I knew I probably could figure out eventually. Uh, but the mentor program actually helped me to escalate and grow a lot faster. And so I, I think there's nothing wrong with uh, humbling yourself a little bit, having a little bit of humility, even if you're a type A personality, and just saying, you know, there are things out there that you don't know, and it's okay to bring professionals in to help guide you and help you to grow your business a lot faster than you could have imagined. Now, uh, mentor programs, uh, you know, are, are not a one size fits all. Obviously, you have to have the right personalities. You have to have the budgets for them if they're not a volunteer effort. Uh, but by and large, uh, there are folks out there that have done what you have not done. And if you can learn from them, it's it's kind of a shortcut cut to successful entrepreneurship, in my opinion. I think mentors are critically important to the success of, of most people. And even though you may not realize it, uh, you have likely been mentored in some way, shape or form by somebody. So just identify the, uh, the areas of opportunity in your life where someone can come in and fill that void and help you. And, uh, and I would highly encourage anybody to, to look into those types of programs um, if, if you are lacking that uh, long-term inspiration to, to get off the couch and go out and build your dream, uh, most certainly. What can the audience expect to hear from you at DealMaker Live 2022? We are really excited to share with you guys how you can rock multifamily deals through partnerships. There are lots of ways you can acquire assets and it's a whole different animal when you're buying land or ground up construction, single family flips, um, burrs, you name it, versus uh, actually getting into larger multifamily. Now you can get into duplexes or even smaller multifamily, but in order to get into the larger multifamily assets, you're generally syndicating. And again, that can get kind of complicated, but there's even many ways to syndicate, right? You can bring your general partnership team in, you can bring in um, co-GPs, you can bring in uh, a large investor base or just one or two equity partners that come in along with you on the deal. So we're excited to share with you guys the whole process of partnering to, to rock larger multifamily deals and what that looks like and, and how to scale your business through that process.